Those are three ways of turning the semiconductor into conductor. Let's just talk about them briefly. So first, thermal activation. Let me draw that band diagram again. You've got uh, the conduction energy. You've got the valence band. I should say the conduction band edge. You've got the valence band edge. And you have all these, these electrons. But one of the electrons just has enough thermal energy that up it goes. And so now you have an electron up in the conduction band. Now there's a probability of that happening. Any process that's thermal, called thermal activation, has a probability of excitation. Th those of you studying statistical mechanics are going to get your fill of, of, of this Boltzmann factor. Sometimes I have time to cover it in general physics, and I, I had you guys always read about it last year, but we didn't talk about it in, in class. The probability of promotion, I'll just call it PR, for probability that this electric, one electron gets promoted up to the conduction band is proportional to E to the minus energy gap, band, band gap, over KT, where K is Boltzmann's constant, T is temperature in Kelvin. Let me give you a little uh, hint here. We operate almost all of our devices around room temperature. What really matters is, you know, T is going to be room temperature. 30 is 290. Use 300 Kelvin for T. At 300 Kelvin, KT, Boltzmann's constant times temperature, is 0 0.0259 electron volts. Yes, it's unit of energy. So that's your room temperature, your room temperature value. So for almost every calculation you do in this class, you're going to use 0 0.0259 for KT. And you're going to see KT in practically every equation that you make use of in this course. So you want to use that a lot. Conductivity now. Semiconductor becomes conducting when you get more electrons up here in the conduction band. So conductivity depends on how many electrons are up there in the conduction band. Well, I, I can't tell you like how many because that depends on how big the semiconductor is. So we practically talk about how many electrons per unit volume have made it into the conduction band. So I'm going to write an expression here, which we're going to prove later for conductivity. The Greek letter sigma, it's Q. Okay, so the author of our textbook uses the letter Q for 1.6 times 10 minus 19 coulombs. So we will use the letter Q for that as well. Q times N. N is the number density of promoted carriers. Write that down and think of what that means. Number density means the number per unit volume. Promoted carriers means the electrons that made it into the conduction band. They're above E sub C. That's the number of electrons in the conduction band per unit volume. And in this course, we're going to use cubic centimeters as our unit of volume. I'm not done. Times the mobility. Mu is mobility. What is that? Oh, I'll tell you. If you have an electron in an environment, in this case it's the crystalline environment of a semiconductor, you apply an electric field to that electron, what does it do? It accelerates. That's what electrons do when they're put in electric fields. They accelerate because they feel electric force. But in a crystalline environment, it keeps bumping into things. So just like an object falling through the air, an electron accelerating in a crystalline environment under an electric force will arrive at a terminal velocity. And mobility is that terminal speed divided by the electric field that's accelerating it. And that's what mobility is. So if I were to try, attempt to sketch out what does conductivity versus temperature look like? Conductivity goes as N. And apparently N, the number of electrons that made it in the conduction band, goes as e to the minus gap energy over kt. So if sigma goes as n, and n goes as that exponential, then sigma goes as that exponential. So sigma is proportional to e to the minus gap energy over kt. And so if I ask myself, well, what does that look like as a function of temperature? It looks like this. So at zero temperature, there's no conductivity because you're going e to the minus infinity. But at some very, very high temperature, you're calculating e to the minus zero, basically, which is one. So conductivity levels off at high temperature.
Now, it actually levels off at a very high temperature. I'll talk about that in a second. Sometimes it's more intuitive to talk about resistance, so let's just talk about resistance here or resistivity. A conductivity is in use of uh, per ohm meter, but resistivity, resistance is, is in use of ohms. You know, it's going to look like this. It will also level off at some at high temperature. But the temperature where it levels off is very high. You can tell that by looking at that exponential. KT is 0 0.0259 at room temperature. Energy gap is typically on the order of one electron volt. Two electron volts, three electron volts, but at least one. KT has to be also at least one for conductivity to have, have risen significantly or for resistance to have dropped significantly. At room temperature where KT is 0 0.0259, You've barely made a dent in this. And so my point is, is that this levels off at several thousand Kelvin, much higher than the melting point. You never really see it get that up, way, up to, way up to here. It just doesn't happen. The, the melting point's like here. <laughs> Two sub M are melting. So that's, uh, that's thermal activation, sort of a summary of, of what's going on there. Doping adds carriers into the conduction band. Well, it, it can add doping can add electrons to the conduction band, but there's another thing it can do. It can add holes to the valence band. So let's make a picture of what that means. Energy versus position. So it's that positional dependent energy diagram. And I'll just go ahead and draw the valence band. And I'll go ahead and draw the conduction band. If you were to dope this semiconductor with a bunch of atoms that have a tendency to accept electrons so like boron doped into silicon so it will take on electrons because the atom itself has fewer electrons than the matrix and so if one of these atoms is going to go into the place of one of these matrix in order to be chemically like the things that are around it, it needs to find an electron. These circles are essentially, they're the energy levels of the dopant atoms. So what does that mean? That means the distance in energy between these two levels, the valence band and where I just drew these circles, is the ionization energy. The energy that it takes to introduce an electron into, into these atoms. And so these atoms are able to take an electron from the valence band and just pull it out. Now what does that do? It does two things. First of all, that atom becomes an, a negatively charged ion. And secondly, some atom in the matrix is now missing an electron. That absence of an electron is otherwise called a hole. An atom that has a hole has a pretty easy time of passing that hole onto the next atom and onto the next atom and onto the next atom. So holes conduct. Holes can, uh, can behave like positive electrons, and, uh, except none of the math will work because the mass would be all messed up. But they behave like positive electrons. And so we call this a p-type semiconductor also called a hole doped semiconductor. It has hole carriers. Dopants that are put in there are called acceptor dopants or acceptor ions, but acceptor dopants. And those acceptor dopants become negative ions, leaving a mobile hole in the valence band. Alternatively, these lines are supposed to be straight and horizontal, by the way. Our dopants could have energies that are very close to the conduction band edge. And again, this energy difference is the ionization energy of those dopant atoms. And so one of those atoms can very readily donate an electron into the conduction band. Now you've got a more classic conductor. You've got a conduction band that has electrons in it. We, we fill our semiconductor up with dopants that can do that. You might say it's a donor doped semiconductor, or rather it's N type. N type means it's capable of conducting with negative charges. P type means it's capable of conducting with positive charges. So an N type, or rather uh, an electron doped, so I'm just going to write um, electron, that's my symbol for electron doped semiconductor. And so here you have uh, donor dopants, and so these donor dopants contribute electrons 
with very small ionization energy. I mean, this is very small. These ionization energy is very small. The donor atoms become positive ions because they give up an electron. The dope semiconductor is still electrically neutral because you get all these positive donor ions or all of these negative acceptor ions, but likewise, you also have carriers of the opposite charge, just as many. For every atom that becomes ionized, you have an electron in the conduction band, and so they cancel. An important assumption that we make is that at room temperature, there's 100% ionization. So let me just put it here. We're going to make the 100% ionization assumption all semester long, except when, like, if the problem statement actually says it's not the case. For the most part, uh, we'll just assume that all of the atoms that have been doped into here are ionized, meaning that if I put a thousand atoms in my semiconductor, I have a thousand electrons in the, the conduction band or a thousand holes in the valence band. That's how you can uh, uh, turn a semiconductor into a conductor with the doping. Now there's photo excitation. Photo excitation, yes, you guessed it, a nice solar process. Back to our energy level diagram. My explanation here doesn't necessarily depend on the discussion of dopants. I simply have atoms. The atoms in the lattice are in possession of a lot of valence electrons, and so I have a valence electron here. I have my energy gap here, specifically E sub G for band gap, and along comes a photon. So there's a symbol for a photon coming along and striking this electron, and up it goes into the conduction band. That's photo excitation. So it's all there is to it, uh, for the most part. So uh, the photon has some energy, or E sub gamma means the energy of a photon. Gamma for is a symbol for a photon, typically. And it just has to be greater than, really greater than or equal to, greater than or equal to the energy gap. I did want to say one other thing uh, back here on, on doping. And that is that a semiconductor with no dopants added is referred to as an intrinsic semiconductor. I've got to get that word in front of you. Intrinsic semiconductor means undoped. So that's the basic introduction to band theory of semiconductors. But we'll apply this right away to description of devices in lecture three. Okay.